let's have a look at five more JavaScript array methods that you probably should know. The find index method is very similar to index of where you're able to uh, find the index of the first element in the array. But uh, this one here allows you to pass in a function which is going to test um, that particular thing. So let's say we have a list or an array here of car manufacturers. We can see here we have uh, Ford, uh, Audi, Honda and Toyota. So these all have a country. Now, let's say I want to find the first car manufacturer in this array that is uh, from the country of Japan. So we can do this using uh, the find index method. So dropping down here, Let's make a new constant uh, called uh, i equal to, and then I can say something like uh, car manufacturers dot find index, and I'm now going to call that method. I can now pass in a function. Now, if this function returns true, that is the uh, the item which is going to be found, and the index of that item is going to be returned. So I can say here uh, car or I can just call this like manufacturer because of course this right here refers to a single manufacturer as it loops through every single one. Now we're going to say here return manufacturer uh, dot country is equal to Japan. So the first object here, the first manufacturer to return true is going to be what gets put in the i constant as the return value. If I was to now console.log here, I can log out uh, i, okay, I'll save this and I can run this code real quick. So let me just, uh, let me hop down here. I can say node find index and we get two right there. So zero, one, two, we get Honda. I'll quickly also log out uh, the actual uh, uh, item itself. So at index I, run it again. And of course we get name Honda, country, Japan. So like I said, the find index lets you search an array, passing in a function to test which one to return. Next up, we've got the unshift method. So this one here allows you to add a new item to the array, but unlike push, this one here is gonna add the item to the beginning of the array. So it's good for when you have things like a stack. As an example, we've got this score history. This right here is supposed to be a history of all the scores I achieved in some sort of game. So the first item in the array is my most recent score of 16. Then we go down to 22, 11 and so on as the history, of course, you know, gets increased as I keep playing the game. So let's say I want to add a new score to this history. I might decide to make a new function called add score. It's going to take in the most recent score that I just achieved with the imaginary game. Okay. Now, we can say inside here score history dot unshift and then pass through the score just like that. So now it's going to insert this score at the beginning of the array. It is also going to return the updated count of how many items there are. Okay, so I can say something like const updated score count is equal to score history dot unshift. All right. Now, Alongside this, I'm also going to, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to console.log what the score history looks like once I, of course, add that item. And I'm also going to say something like, uh, you know, the total number of scores is, then just say, you know, uh, updated score count, just to see, of course, what result we get from this method. So now I can say something like add score. I'll add 24 to my score here. I can run this script now. And as we can see, we get 24 at the very beginning of that score history. And we can see here, it also says the total number of scores is now six. So like I said, the unshift here is super useful when it comes to you know maintaining a stack as opposed to a queue. And something like a score history is definitely a good use case for it. Next on the list is probably one of the most important methods to know in any language, not just JavaScript, and that is the array map method. So what is array map? Basically, it allows you to transform uh, the items inside an array and return that newly transformed array. Okay, so as an example, I've got a list of employees right here. Each of these are, of course, objects of the employee's name and how much they are earning as their salary. So we can, uh, well, let's just say I want to convert this list of 
objects into a list of strings and those strings contain the text. For example, you know, this person is Dom and they're earning 85,000 a year. If I want to take this and transform it into a list of strings, I can do so using array map. So we're transforming the items inside of it. So let's hop down here and I'll show you what I mean. Let's make a new constant called summaries. And by summaries, I just mean a list of those strings containing the employee summary, what their name is, how much they earn. So we can say here as an example, employees.map. Now we're going to call map just like this and you're going to pass in a function. Whatever the return value is from this function, that is going to be what the new uh, transformed version of that item is. This function is going to run for every single item in the array. We can say employee as the parameter name, just like that. And like I said, whatever gets returned here is going to be the value. Let's return 10 as an example. Let's now hop down here and console.log summaries. Remember, summaries is an entirely new array. We still have employees. This is not touched. This is a whole new array. So I can run node map.js and we get 10, 10 and 10. We get three items because this ran for every single employee. Now let's instead return something useful. For example, a string. And we can say something like, uh, let's do uh, employee.name is earning, then say employee.salary uh, each year, something like that, okay? So we have this new string for every single employee. I can run the code again and we get an array of all of those strings, which of course ran for every single employee in that list. So the array map method is used so often um, in uh, JavaScript or like I said, any other language. So it's really important to understand how this works here. And you're gonna naturally find use cases for it as you continue you know, building projects and things like that. Next up, we have the entries method. So this one here, I'll admit, I don't use very often, but I did find it really interesting. So the entries method is going to return you an, uh, an iterator, which contains uh, an array of the index and the item itself as it loops through every single item in your original array. So bear with me here. I'm going to show you how it works. So we've got this uh, array of names here. Now, if I want to loop over these and get the index and the item itself, I can use a normal for each loop, but let's just say I'm using a for of loop instead. So I can say something like for of just like this, and I'll say for const, and then I'm going to say here something like, let's just call this one E. Okay. I'm now going to say names dot entries. Now, like I said, this one here is going to return an iterator. Now, this means it's going to be compatible with the for of loop. So now I can say console.log, I'll pass an E here. I can run this code and we can see we get for every single item in the array, every single name, we get an array back. First index is the index where it is here. And the second index is the actual item itself. So we get zero and Dom, we get one Jessica and so on. So you get the index and the item itself. Now, you can also combine this with array destructuring. As an example right here, we can say square brackets, we can say I and then name. So now we can do something like this. We can say, look, okay, uh, the name is at index, then say I, just like that. I can run it again and we get something like this. So like I said, not used very often, but I did find it interesting and you can of course use it in an instance like this with a for of loop to achieve or to retrieve your index and your object itself. Next up, we have the slice method. So slice is going to allow you to take a slice of an existing array. So you can pass in indexes. And of course, like I said, you're going to get a slice. Now I've got a array here of three names. And this right here is like a podium. You have Johnny who came first, Dom second and Bob in third place. So let's just say I want to only retrieve the runner ups of this podium. So basically everything uh, after Johnny. So second place and uh, second place and third place. Let's go down here. I'm going to say const runner ups is equal to, then I'll say podium dot slice and then pass in index one because 
Whatever you pass in here, this is going to be your starting index and it's inclusive. So if I say index one and leave it like that, it's going to start at index one and give me everything after that. So now if I console.log runner ups, we can see here upon running this code, we get uh, Dom and Bob. Now, you can also pass in a second argument as your end index. Let's add some more names like let's do Adam and let's do, uh, you know, Matt or something like that. I can now say between index one and index, uh, let's do index uh, four here. So I want Dom, Bob, Adam, and that's it because your last index or whatever you provide here to your second argument, it's not gonna be inclusive. So I can say index four here, it's now gonna grab index one, two and three, but not four. It's gonna end at four here, which is why it's not inclusive. So I can run it again and we can see we get Dom, Bob and Adam. Now, uh, you can also pass in negative indexes. As an example, we know that four is the last index of the array. So I can actually say negative one and negative one is the exact same as saying four because you're at zero here, negative one loops back and it goes back to Matt. I'll run it again and we get the exact same result. If I say negative two, this just means Adam because of course negative one, negative two, do it again and we get Dom and Bob. So you can pass through negative indexes to the slice method. Now, one very important thing to note about slice is that it's going to do uh, complete copies for your simple data like strings, numbers, booleans, but it's going to do shallow copies for your objects. Let me explain this right now. So let's just go back to the Johnny, Dom and Bob example. Okay, so I'll just slice at index one here to of course get my Dom and Bob. I'm now gonna say, okay, cool. Let's console.log. Let's check if runner ups at index uh, zero is the same. So I'm gonna do triple equals here for the most strictest comparison. I'm gonna say, is it equal to podium at index one? Remember, runner ups index zero is gonna be DOM and podium index one is also gonna be DOM. So let's run this right here and we get true. This is because we're comparing against the string here. Okay, so of course, you know, DOM is gonna be equal to DOM, but it's actually a copy of that data because they're simple values. Now let's change this to use objects instead. I'm gonna copy and paste uh, an, uh, a new array here. So I'll replace this one with this right here. So now we have podium as objects. We have an object for every single person, Johnny, Dom and Bob, and also their score. Now, let me just change, or let's actually, let's make this constant just the same as before. So I'll make it podium as well. So. Let's now slice the podium and check the runner ups. I do it again and we get true. Why do we get true? The reason why we get true is because we are not making a copy of that object. It is the same object. If I was to say something like uh, runner ups at index uh, zero, so targeting DOM, and I say the score is now 500, I then console.log the podium, okay? just like this, right, podium. I'll run the code and we can see DOM was affected, okay? Whereas you wouldn't get this with the other one because you're making copies, all right? Now, of course, this is just natural because um, you know, you're know you editing uh, an object here as opposed to a string. But the point is, when you make a copy, your objects are just by reference, but your strings, numbers, and Booleans are, of course, by copy. That is all for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.